Luke 17, 26 to 33. I wish I had a, 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 a prop person to do, but I didn't. Um, I'm speaking on the safest place in America. The safest place in America. You guys know where that is, right? Okay. <laughs> huh? Right here? Right here? Bio, say that? We'll find out. There is a safe place in America, and I'm going to show you where it is, all right? Luke 17, chapters 20, uh, chap chapter 17, verses 26 to 33. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted by Kurt and they built. <laughs> but on that day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day that the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Second, uh, second shortest scripture in the Bible. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. Amen. Amen. The safest, safest place in America. Lord Jesus, I love you. I love you, Lord. Lord, this is your moment. This is not my moment. This is your pulpit. It is not my pulpit. These are your people, not mine. This is your church, not mine. Your will, not mine. Your words, not mine. Your glory, not mine. Your world, not mine. And your word, not mine. But I pray, oh God, that you know that this body is yours, not mine. The spirit is yours, not mine. This mind is yours, not mine. This soul is yours and not mine. This will is yours, not mine. Sweet Jesus. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. So good to be here with all of you today if you are watching online thank you for watching share this live if you have your phone in your hand if you don't have it in your hand pick it up and share the live with someone let them know that hope nyc is having church on a wednesday like we always do and that god answers prayers on a thursday <laughs> somebody said the other day that wasn't you you know that wasn't you guys because that's been in the works for years and I said to them you need to go back and watch watch the sermon 
that um, it was so funny. I put this in the podcast for last week, uh, for tomorrow, where God answered the prayer um, for Roe versus Wade the very next day after we prayed. And that I told the Lord the next day, that wasn't us, Lord. And I know that wasn't me, Lord. And he stopped me and he said, yeah, that was the drop that caused the spill. Not necessarily me, but the prayer of the saints. And and um, it's so funny, while I was doing the podcast, Noah was sitting next to me playing with Play-Doh, playing with clay. And he... Um, I wasn't paying attention to him and then after the the podcast I was showing everybody online what we made what the kids made and Noah made a little vessel and it was filled with water and there was one drop that was about to fall right on it just like that and it, it really struck me he's he's just a child but he heard that and he said this is the drop that caused the overflow and I want to tell you if the adults don't get it the kids will get it and out of the mouth of babes God will ordain praise because heaven is counting on one person to just remember to call on the name of the Lord amen and I believe that this church has been positioned for such a time you may have your seats I don't think it's a coincidence that this is the year that we get to we get to, to build our sanctuary. I don't think it's a coincidence that this is the year that we got to go pray by the courthouses. I don't think that we have any idea about the things that God's going to do in 2022. He's already done so much. Amen. So many of you have told me, Pastor, I didn't get one raise. I got two raises, especially in really more than four people have told me they've gotten the exact raise twice this year. That is incredible. Can we give God praise? for that he is worthy you say well he didn't do that for me yet can you give him praise for somebody else that's just the beginning I know two people one person had two court cases fall down the drain in no time at all can we give God praise for that and when I say fall down the drain I mean when the devil wants to put you behind bars God saying no way I came to set the captives free case dismissed that's how our God is amen and if he did it for me he will do it for you so he's not done yet. Last week while we were raising um, an offering for RTTN Church and there happened to be a little girl from RTTN sitting in our congregation, which I didn't know, praise Jesus. Hope FLA was raising um, an offering for us. Now here's the part that you didn't know unless you were with us last Wednesday, which most likely all of you who are in here were there because you're the Wednesday people. But, but this is what happened. I was a little disappointed by the offering that Hope NYC raised, right? I really was because um, we're a very generous church. So what I had to do was take the offering and take the tithe and take every gift that came in that day and match it. That's what I did. And we ended up with 10000 and something. But the offering that day was just over $3,000, right? Which for a church our size is not very big, but, you know, we're that kind of church. Um, but, you know, the, the money that Hope FLA raised in their church of one-tenth our size it was 3,000 and something. And I think there was no coincidence in that, in that. Can we give God praise for that as well? I want to acknowledge all his goodness in the land of the living. He's been good. He's been good. We were able to bless Malia with, with more than, than we did last time. And I thank God. Not only that, but more blessing is coming their way in the name of Jesus, as well as to bless another family. No, the safest place in America. In a few months from now, um, we are going to be able to, to see more of the Bible come to pass than we expected. So far, we've seen some, but there's some more that's about to happen and you guys are going to be excited um, to hear what those things are but you know I thank God there is a group of people now that just love the word of God um, they, they bug me all the time and they're in the, the scriptures constantly and, and saying wait I just found something in the book of, of Jeremiah of all places and I love that because people aren't just looking for the end in Revelation they're looking for Jesus all over the Bible and if you look for Jesus you're going to find him he said you'll find me when you search for me with all all your heart but another thing you're gonna find happening in the next few months is people looking for a place for safety it's gonna be tough 
to find a place that's safe to be. You know how many people left California? California and New York City were the two most evacuated um, states in the United States since 2019. These are uh, uh, COVID, post-COVID uh, statistics. Not that COVID is over, but post the inception of COVID statistics. Um, so I, I thought it would be interesting for you to find out where are the safest places in America to live. Would you like to know? Pack your bags. Time to go. <laughs> so there are 10. I'm going to rank them in order of the Census Bureau. And these are based on murders per capita, theft per capita, things like that. Also the cost of living, right? Things like that. So they, they took about five or six different measures and they said these are the best and worst states to live in in the United States of America. Safest. How many of you want to hear what they are? How many of you think New York made the list of the 10 safest states? That, not one of you. All right, let's see. Anybody say yes? Uh, you and me, Wes. You and me. <laughs> it didn't. Let me just not. Let me just let you know. We didn't make the list. There are 52 of them, and in the top 10 safest, we did not make the list. Surprise, surprise. Okay. 10 safest states in the United States. And coming in at number 10, we have the good old state of Kentucky. Some of you are like, do they have fried chicken? I'm there. <laughs> number nine, the ninth safest state to live in in the United States of America is Wyoming. Probably because there is nothing there. If you are in Wyoming, my apologies. Number eight, Rhode Island. Anybody surprised? No. no. Number seven, Connecticut. <laughs> we have our Connecticut people over here. Like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Donna trying to move from Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, apparently it is, it is there. Number, not, um, number six, Virginia. I have family there. I wonder if they want company. <laughs> I hear you. This one's going to shock you. Number five. The number five safest place to, work, uh, to live in the United States state, New Jersey. We are confused, Lord. They don't know what, just kidding. No, the parts of Jersey, you know, ain't the parts there probably. <laughs> All right. Number four, Idaho. Only potatoes. I mean, how bad can a potato be? Number three, Maine. Number two, Vermont. You notice we're only on the eastern seaboard and the northeastern part of the, the, the states right now. And the number one safest state, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, to live in the United States is... <laughs> in the United States. Then we'll do the ten top states for education. He just said Trinidad. <laughs> and he's Trini. <laughs> the number one, the number one safest state to live in in the United States of America is New Hampshire. What? Yeah, because it's historic. No, very little nightlife. No gangs. No guns. Well, they have guns. All right. Let's go to the next list, the 10 most dangerous states to live in in the United States of America. Do you think we made the list? People tell me, don't be a preacher in New York. I'm like, all oh, you can just go home because I like it here. All right. The 10 most dangerous states in America. And the reasons, it will shock you. I won't, I won't let you hear it, but the, the, this is... Um, the things that they say cause the danger is gang violence, drug use, starting with um, the states that, anyway, and poverty. Number 10, Missouri. And they're counting murders per capita, okay? Murders per capita, theft, um, larceny, um, all those things. Number nine, Oklahoma. Yeah, call your family. We, we know people that moved there because it was safe. 
Number eight, Arizona. Everybody shocked. Why? Number seven, fasten your seat belts, Agnes. Alabama. Chicago is a city, it's not a state, <laughs> professor. <laughs> Did I say Alabama? Yes. Number six. Oh, you're going to love this one. The sixth most dangerous, number six most dangerous state to live in in the United States, South Carolina. I can see your world just being shattered. Number five, because mainly of one city, but it, it drove up this number, but it's, it's collective, Tennessee. Number four, Arkansas. Number three, voted over and over and over one of the most dangerous places in the United States to ever live, not only because of the possibility that one in 50 people in this state will be assaulted, but the numbers to be um, stolen from is way higher, and the education is the poorest in the country, is Louisiana. Number two, the murders per capita in this state are ridiculous. Because in most of the, the counties in this state, there is zero law enforcement. There just is none. There are not many people there, but it's Alaska, number two. The second most dangerous state in the United States of America to live is Alaska. Positive. And I mean, I knew that one. I thought they would have been number one. The gambling rates, very, very high. Abuse, very, very high. Domestic violence, very, very high. Drunkenness, it is. Um, and depression, suicides, all of those things, psychological issues, very, very high. Law enforcement, very low. So people pretty much take the law into their own hands. And the most dangerous state to live in in the United States of America, are you ready for it? New Mexico. <laughs> Caught you. New Mexico. New Mexico, we did not make the list. Can somebody say hallelujah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so New York has a very, very bad name. What does this have to do with the sermon? I'm talking about the safest place in America. That's why I had to tell you what were the least safest places in America. So already, we're at least not number 10. You understand? We're already doing better, Bronx included. All right? I live there. I'm not just in the Bronx. That's where I was for most of my, my, my time while I was here. That's where I started off. I'm telling you, when I showed up in the Bronx, I went to the grocery store. First sound I heard, it was a tire blowing out of somebody's car. I hit the ground. I was on the floor in Parkchester. Everybody watching me like I'm crazy. I'm like, I watch way too much Law & Order. When the noise has stopped, I will stand up, right? But... <laughs> Um, we didn't make the list of, of the most dangerous cities to live, and I was excited about that because, because we get a bad rap. When you ask anybody in the United States, especially in some states in the South, where the most dangerous place to live is, New York comes up all the time, right? Um, but I, I dare say that there are more dangerous. New York is more dangerous. California is more dangerous. And Nevada is more dangerous than most places for other reasons. You might not get mauled or theft, uh, stolen from. You might not get assaulted as often as you would in other places. But your mind will get warped for sure. You'll be fed propaganda. And you will be fed an agenda that will cause you to walk around in zombie state with your innocence stolen with your wisdom stolen with your knowledge of the gospel stolen but I'm determined that this place right here is going to become the safest place in the United States of America I'm not, and I'm not just saying that, and I'm not just talking about this building, which is my goal. I want this building to be the one where everyone, no matter the color of their skin, what economic background they have, what their nationality was, I want people to step off the train and step off the airplanes at JFK Airport and say, there is a place. I, you remember that song? I know a place. 
Ain't nobody crying. Where have you guys been? No, but if I say, and if you like it, then you should. Well, you know that, right? Don't even sing it. This church, I tell you. I'm determined that this is going to be the safest place. That means, guess what? Water ain't going to leak on my head when I'm coming up them stairs. That's a trip hazard. My stairs, those stairs are slippery. That's very dangerous. That's, I'm not trying to get you to fix that. I'm just saying. If this is going to be the safest place, not only is it going to be safe in the spirit, it's going to be safe in the flesh as well. But this is, it reminds me, our nation and in New York City and California especially. You know how Californians are smart? You know how um, all the most educated people in the world are in Silicon Valley and Hollywood? Somebody say amen if you know that. Don't say it because it's not true. They may have degrees and they may have the resources, but what they don't have in large quantity is the, the wisdom of God. Because in the book of Corinthians, it says that the wisdom of God is foolishness to this world. And in most of Hollywood, anything, they say things like this. You know, these people actually believe that their God is coming back. I heard one person say that. He was asking, he was doing an interview and he said, oh, he was interviewing Jordan Peterson and he said to him, you know, they actually believe, these Bible believers, that they have a savior who is literally going to come back and take them away. And they're laughing at that. Well, I want to stand right here in front of whoever will look at us and say this. I literally believe that we have a savior and he is coming back for his bride, for a church that is prepared for those whose hearts have been washed clean in the blood of the lamb some church member somebody's got to hear me we are not the quiet timid ashamed church we are the bold the redeemed the born again church and we are excited about the fact that Jesus is coming back if you're excited that he's coming back shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph yes exactly right this is that church the safest place in America is not going to be the place where there is the most military activity it's not going to be the place where there are the most guns legal or illegal it's not going to be the place where there is we're giving peace a chance and everybody matters it's not going to be there the safest place in America is going to be the place where the kingdom of the Lord is present I don't know if you want to know you want to know about it but I'm going to tell you about it anyway before the Lord comes back there is going to be great violence there already is great violence in the earth I can't shake the word earthquake it's been about in my spirit for about a full week now every time I try to come up with something every time I try to say something about the conferences that are coming I keep hearing earthquake I keep hearing that word and I don't want to dwell on it because I don't want to say that that's what's going to happen and I'm definitely not predicting that but I hear the Lord saying get ready for the shake remember the sifting remember that sermon well I can't shake that from my mind that the Lord is saying I'm about to do something in the earth that men will once more run into the safety they will look for the safety they will look for a rock to climb up on they will look for a high place to get away from the storm they will look for a shelter and they won't be able to find it but I thank God that he said that he is a rock in a weary land he is a shelter in the time of storm. He is a refuge and strength, a present help in the time of trouble. That's what he is to me. In the scripture that we read today, let me tell you what's happening. Jesus is saying to them, he's saying, look for the days of Noah and look for the days of Lot. Because in the end, that's how it's going to be again. He said men are going to be doing the same thing they did back then and I don't want to try to tell you that that's only happening now because that's been happening ever since. Yeah. Seriously, what's different though? What's different is when six out of ten seven-year-olds, I'm not sure whether they're male or female, that's different. You don't have to be, you don't even have to be super hyper Christian to think that's different. That's just different. That's too much. So the little rainbows all over um, Legoland. 
There's a whole gay pride parade. Little Lego people. About 5,000 of them. Walking down New York's streets with the flag. The entire thing is lit up that way. And it's beautiful. And I'm standing there and I'm reading the sign and it says, um, everyone is awesome. If you watch the Lego movie, the song is, everything is awesome. So I started singing it, right? I was like, everyone is awesome. And I didn't notice there was somebody standing right next to me. Big old girl with red hair. She's like, isn't it awesome though? I was like, yeah, everything is awesome. Everyone is awesome. People are made in the image of God. They are awesome. They're definitely awesome. And then I moved away fast because that was dis <laughs> that was de-escalating. It was escalating. I had to de-escalate it immediately. But in this scripture, when he said, remember, remember Lot's wife, that hit me. He didn't say, remember Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, remember Lot's wife. Remember, he didn't say, remember those cities I burned. He said, remember Lot's wife, right? Right now, you just imagine Cheryl had a big pillar of salt right here. You seen it? Yeah. Wonderful. In Genesis chapter 18, let me tell you the story real quick. And then I'll tell you what the Lord is saying. He's saying three things. One, he's saying the collective sin of a city comes up before God as a sound. I didn't really know that before until I read the scripture in the book of Genesis chapter 18. I want you to, if you take notes, take copious notes today. Take lots and lots of them because they're, they're very significant for what's about to happen. In uh, Genesis 18, 20 to 21, it says, And the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will hear what he says. This is how I know there's a sound. He said, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the outcry against it. That has come to me, and if not, I'll know. This is what God's saying. He said, if not, I'll know. So this is what he's saying. He's saying sin makes a sound and an outcry is a sound. If everybody in Sodom and Gomorrah is evil, right? Because remember, Abraham is bargaining for Sodom and Gomorrah. You guys know the story? Okay, no, so I'll tell you. All right, Sodom was sinful. If you know that, say, I know that. It's where that word sodomy comes from. Do you know what sodomy is? Say, I know. All right, if you don't know, say, I don't know. Okay, it's, it's homosexuality. That's what that word means, right? Sodomy was sinful according to God. And the sound of sin comes up in the ears of God. But so while God is hearing, and I'm not picking on gays. That's not what this is about at all. I'm telling you the Bible story. And sodomy is in the, the dictionary. Go look it up, right? So, so the sound of the, the, the lifestyle in Sodom and Gomorrah came up before God. I want to ask you a question. What do you think the sound of sin sounds like in heaven? What do you think it does? Have you ever, how many of you have a thing for fingernails on a chalkboard? Just imagine. I don't even have to make the sound and you're like. <laughs> okay, how many of you, if my thing is metal on concrete. Like, you know, when they're mixing cement and that shovel grinds on the, that's my thing. That's why I can't do that kind of manual labor. That sound, right? Um, or, or the worst of all, which makes my teeth want to bleed, is a grain of sand caught in my teeth. And I bite down on that. I, I, my, my, I feel like I have 800 volts of electricity going through my body when I, when, I, when I do that. That, I feel, is a sound sin makes in heaven. That's how I feel it gets to my God. When he hears the collective cry of a nation, the collective cry of a city. And when, if, if the and United States of America could do a census that says this is the most dangerous place to live, don't you think God can rank us? Yes. Can God rank us and say this is the most sinful place in America to be? If you don't think so, well, let me take you back to Sodom and Gomorrah. Because there are a whole bunch of cities available to bomb up, right? There are a whole bunch of cities available to destroy. But God's going to pick on these five cities. We only read about two here. But there are five all together that God's going to eliminate. Because when the sound becomes unbearable, you stop it. 
You can't tell me that's annoying to you, but you keep eating the rice with the, the stone in it. You can't tell me that's, that sound is unbearable to you, but you, 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 you insist on dragging your own nails on the chalkboard. But we expect God to put up with the sound of sin for as long as we establish sin on the earth. We expect God to be okay with listening to the sound, listening to that, and not doing anything about it. But that's not what our God says he is. He says he will not always chide with man. He will not always be long-suffering he will not always let sin go unpunished there comes a time when God says enough is enough and that was that what happened in the days of Noah and it is what happened in the days of Lot and God came down himself he said this is why I hear the sound of sin but I hear the sound of an outcry against the sin while somebody is sending up a sin sound there's somebody on the other side out crying sin and saying God do you see what's happening it's sin against you oh God they're murdering the children God can you do something God they're changing your law God and God we're asking you to come and do, do you understand that makes a sound in heaven and you might say but that's asking for vengeance no it's asking for the will of God somebody has to ask for the will of God I don't want to be right I just want him to be right let God be true and every man a liar I'll get in the lying line so God's word can remain true his word is established forever his word is settled in heaven his word does not change because my opinions have changed mm. his word doesn't change because I'm more sophisticated his word doesn't change because my philosophy has changed. Because I had a different professor who has taught me something new. His word still remains the same. I could have a whole new perspective. But he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word is forever settled in heaven. Somebody say, thank God. The outcry against sin is heard and someone is crying out against sin. The safest place in the world is where people cry out against sin. It really is. Because God comes down and he says, not, by the way, not just because I cry out about you. And I say, God, you've got to watch Fanny. Mm. Lord, she's having a baby. And God says, well, she's married. I said, God, but Fanny is offending me. The Lord doesn't just take that because I say it, you know. I love that. He comes down to check that out. He said he came down to Sodom and Gomorrah to see if what the people were asking was actually true. Don't you love the God who will do the investigation for you? Don't you love the God who will say, not just because you call yourself preacher and you complain about something, I'm going to say, okay. I know there are preachers. I heard one preacher say, if you get to heaven and I ain't there, you in hell. I was thinking if I get to heaven and you there, perhaps I am in hell. Because I, it's so weird to me that people will say things like that. But hear what God said. He said, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the outcry against it that has come to me. He said, if not, I'll know. Love that. If not, I'll know. So Abraham, he goes to Abraham. He's talking to Abraham. Um, Pastor God, you come be Abraham for a sec. And he's talking to Abraham. I love God and Abraham's relationship. So, so Lot is Abraham's nephew. And Abraham's nephew, and that would be, uh, Mo, you have your baby. I need a bold guy. Everybody in this church have hair. Come, Marlon. Uh, all right, so we have Abraham and we have, and we have a Lot, right? And we know a lot about Lot. Let me tell you what we know about Lot. Abraham is wealthy. If you want an uncle, make sure it's like he's like Abraham. You know how Trinis and Guyanese and Jamaicans like to call everybody uncle? Don't do that. <laughs> so Uncle Abraham had many sons, right? And Lot was his nephew, but it was like his son. And so he, he adopts Lot and, and he takes Lot under his wing. Teaches him everything. Shares all his flocks with him. 
He said, my land is your land and your land is my land. What? <laughs> lovely, lovely. Don't you love it when families say, come to New York, I got a place you could stay. <laughs> I will mind you, no girl, come now. You see, they never thought you'd actually do it. <laughs> and then you show up with your bag or your grip. <laughs> yeah, long ago we didn't have suitcases, we just had grips. You show up with your grip. So the first week, what? They carry you to see the Empire State Building. First week, they want to show you in some real authentic New York pizza. Show you all the sights and sounds, act like if they and their father owned the Empire State Building. If you're lucky, you get to see the Statue of Liberty. And then second week, so you start looking for a job yet? <laughs> yes, I'll look in, I'll look in. I ain't got nothing yet, but you know. Third week, they're not saying anything, but like doors just closing louder. <laughs> it's a little bit awkward. It's a little bit like, mm. it's not me, eh? it's him. So you start blaming the husband, right? He uncomfortable with so many people in the house. You know, you guys really need to start finding somewhere to go, but we don't have nowhere to go because we just reach, we don't have a job, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then pretty soon, all the love turns into not so much love. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> so let me tell you, these two guys got really rich. And Abraham was the kind of man that he could start over from scratch. He's like Elon Musk, where he could be broke and a billionaire in the next year, broke and a billionaire, broke and a billionaire three times, man. He could do that. And so a lot had a bunch of flocks, and Abraham had a bunch of flocks, and they were doing really good. But guess what started happening? Their shepherds started fighting their shepherds. Because sometimes it's not just you, eh? it's your, the, your people. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we don't, I don't have anything against the church down the road. It's the people in my church and the people in his church that, that think there is some kind of, of um, um, not animosity, there's some kind of rivalry that there really isn't. I saw one great preacher at the um, airport the other day and I was like, wait a minute, I wonder if that's him, I wonder if that's him. And I'm trying to stare at him to see if he could stare back at me. And I asked Michelle, and then I was like, is that who I think it is? And they're like, nah. I'm like, okay. And then I see one of my ex-members come and pick him up, and, and then he waves to me. I was like, dang it, it was him. I could have gone and said hello. I could have gone and hugged his neck. It made him very uncomfortable. <laughs> but there is nothing, there is no, and I, there, I don't know a single preacher, especially in the New York area, that I don't love. I, I don't know any of them. One of them, um, I was in Trinidad the other day, and, and somebody told me that a certain preacher in New York said that he and I were friends. Really good friends. I was like, cool, I hope I get to meet him someday. Because <laughs> I never met him. So Lot goes, Abraham tells Lot, choose the east or choose the west. Choose whichever way you want to go. Wherever you go, I'll go the other way. Guess which one he chooses? The better one. The Bible says he looked and saw that the land was fertile. There was a river running through it. His flocks would, you know, them nieces and nephews. <laughs> They're not scared to choose the better one, right? You know, we from the old school, we're like, no, uncle, you've done so much for me. <laughs> not these young people today. They're like, no, 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 we'll take them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. All right. Good. I thought it was just me. So that's what's essentially happening. But you know what he did? He, he pretty much chose Vegas. He chose a good land. He chose a place where the money was flowing like milk and honey. Or he chose Cali because that looked like the land. But the thing is, there was so much sin in the land. And sin was so rampant. But Lot didn't care about the sin. He just cared about the win. He just cared about the money. So the sin was irrelevant. So God continues to bless Abraham. Woo! Yes. Meanwhile, God continues to bless Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. Let me tell you what's happening. The Bible says that Lot, and I'll show you in, the, in one verse how it says all of that. Everything corrupt is going on around Lot, and Lot ain't saying nothing. Yes. You know, 
you don't have to be like me he's not participating he's a holy man yes he's a holy man he's not actively involved in the sin but he's not saying anything about it whoa that sounds familiar as long as we're not doing it then God's okay right as long as my house is okay then God's okay with you know as long as we are pure everybody on the outside could go to hell in a handbasket that's kind of what Lot was doing it's like getting rich in the midst of sin and being okay with it as long as you're rich and that's what was going on and you know how I know that because one day two gorgeous angels Kurt it could just have to be one the other one has a baby and it's gonna be you one gorgeous angel and his friend <laughs> Sharon I'm sorry <laughs> some angels came down with God himself they came down to visit their old friend Abraham and so they go to talk to Abraham somebody say good news bad news how many of you like the good news first how many of you like the bad news first wow well the angels went and gave the good news first by this time next year your old wife Sarah she's gonna have a baby and Sarah laughed and she said I didn't laugh you know and Abraham's like I'm ready <laughs> so what if I'm 99 years old you ready <laughs> Tawana I'm just kidding <laughs> and they gave the message and then Abraham is like, all right, where are you guys going? And they say, well, we're going to go destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. What do you do? You say, wait, now, wait, 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 God, wait. Whoa. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, while uncle is bargaining with God, Mr. here is comprom compromising with his with sin while somebody is begging God to rescue you you are in the middle of being okay with you with doing you you know heaping up your nest egg making sure you and yours are taken care of because after all that's what society says is the most important thing but I'm here to tell you that your nest egg isn't safe your children aren't safe your home isn't safe your stuff isn't safe if the place that you're living in is writhing in sin it's not safe and let me tell you so he said all right God God wait 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 if there are 50 righteous will you spare Sodom and, and God's like yeah yeah I'll do it 50 and so they start heading out and, and Abraham is like no 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 wait 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 well, what if there were 40 the angels are like and, and yeah yeah we'll do it for 40 so they start heading out and Abraham's like no hold up hold up what about 30? Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll do it for 30. Wait, talk about driving a bargain. So they're coming. Okay, you guys have to make this look real. You guys are so dead. Call them back. Wait. No, you're talking. How about 10? God's like, mm, 10, I don't know. Fine, we'll save Sodom for 10 people. Do you realize what Abraham did? What did he do? He bargained for Lot. He bargained for his nephew. Because he's like, my nephew, his wife, his two daughters, their husbands, and they must have four more people. He's thinking, at least those six I know Lot is righteous. I know Lot is righteous. This is Abraham's heart. He's like, I don't really care for 50. It's those, those, his household is who I'm caring for. And so God, will you save the city for my family? This is what Abraham is doing. And God said, yes, I'll do it. And then do you know God gets there? The angels. The Lord stays with Abraham. And, and then these two angels come. And they meet Lot. And the Bible says they go and sit in the city square. Guess what? Lot recognizes them immediately. He knows they are the angels of the Lord. And so they sit in the, in the square. Oh, he didn't sit with them, brother. Mm -mm. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Because Abraham's relationship with the angels does not dictate Lot's relationship with the angels. 
Neither does my relationship with God dictate your relationship with God. The person who prays with you has a relationship with God. The person who prays for you has a relationship with God. But that does not identify your relationship with God. God will sit and eat with Abraham, but he will not do that with Lot. Why? Because Abraham had the audacity to stand up and say, God, I will go where you send me, even though I don't know where I'm going. I believe that I'll be the father of many nations, even though I have zero children. I believe that my children will be as the sands of the sea and the stars in the sky, even though my wife hasn't born me a single child. I'll believe you anyway. And God said, because of you, Abraham, all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed. And those that bless you will be blessed. And those that curse you will be but that's a different relationship so they're like we're sitting in the city let me tell you why they're sitting in the city can I get some dramatic music yes they're sitting in the city square you know why because it's Columbus Square it's Times Square are you getting it that's where they are because when you want to find the people with the voice. Do we do you don't? <laughs> when you want to find the people with the voice, you go to the public square. And they were sitting there. Let me tell you something. You come there to mess with them. They will call fire and brim. So they were there to do some damage. They weren't there to negotiate. The negotiation was done. They were there to eliminate whoever came to accost them. You think didn't they, they didn't know that it had a, 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 a whole city of men coming for them? Of course they did they knew that that's why they said we will spend the night in the city and Lot was like no 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 brethren no 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 you coming home to my house come on no they're like no we are staying in the city no we have he said he make eyes go 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 they're like fine we'll go and they go to they go, they go to Lot's house. So let me tell you what happened. The Bible says before they laid down for the night, they didn't even lay down for the night. But it says the men of the city, the old men, the young men, and this was very significant, Marlon. It says from every quarter, quarter. From every quarter. You ever heard about the French quarter? They came. You ever heard about the Latin quarter? They came. It's funny how that's how they divide so many of the cities. It literally says from every quarter the men came. Because they saw the two most incredible men they'd ever seen. Sitting in the city square. Man. Like Thor and... T'Challa. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they come banging on the door in the middle of the night. And they come, they say, send us the men who came into your house so that we can lie with them or we can, I'm, I don't know what language they used, but it wasn't good. And this is how I know that he was a compromiser. Because the Bible says, listen to what he did. He opened the door of the house and he slipped out and he put himself against the door between the men of the city and the men of God. Listen to me. When you decide that's your position, hmm, that you are the communicator, that you can work both sides of this thing. That you that, that, that the church don't pay attention to the world enough so you're going to be the go-between when you decide I just want to hear both sides of the story I'm not telling you to not be you know open to arguments but when you position yourself outside of the door in order to hear the sides of an ungodly argument you put yourself in direct opposition to the truth of the word you set yourself up to be the one who's attacked. Let me show you what happened. The Bible said that he came and he put his body up against the door like this. And he said, please, please don't do this. Don't do this. You know what he's begging for? He's begging for them to spare Sodom. 
He's like, you don't know why these men are here. Please leave them alone. Don't do this wicked thing, brethren. Brethren, don't do this. He's saying, brothers, don't do this. And you know what they said? They said, you're a stranger and you come here to judge us. Let me tell you something. All the time while he's living there, giving them money, making jobs for them, acting like one of them. He was a brother. But the day he decides to say, don't do this wicked thing. You're crossing a line. All of a sudden, he's not a brother anymore. You want to see how fast the world will turn on you? Say that you stand up for Jesus. Then all of a sudden, the people who were your friends and your ride or dies and the people who were the blood brothers suddenly don't want to talk talk to you anymore yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. don't do this wicked thing he said and they said get out of our way the Bible says they went after him they pressed so hard into Lot he even the Bible says offered his two daughters now that's a whole different story that I don't want to talk about right now right that's a whole different kettle of fish that we don't have time to fry but the Bible says they pressed, the men pressed up against Lot. They would have assaulted him. The angels inside struck the men with blindness. All the men. And you know what the Bible said? They finally gave up when they couldn't find the door. Let me tell you something. When a person is blind, but the depravity is so deep that they're still trying to find when a person is blind and all of a sudden you go blind and you don't realize, wait a minute, I'm not seeing clearly. Something is wrong. But all you're thinking is about the carnal desire that has to be satisfied in you. Stop and see that something is wrong. Something is wrong, but you can't see it. The Bible said that angels there inside the house, they, they stuck their hand out the door. They grabbed Lot and pulled him in. I wish he didn't look at the angel like that. <laughs> He's been in Sodom too long. <laughs> so, <laughs> Let me wind this up. What Lot was trying to do was trying to deceive the angels when he said, come inside my house. Church, I hear me. If you hear anything, hear this. He wanted to spare the angels from seeing what the town he was in was really like. Because he knew inside his house, things were okay. So he was saying, no, come stay by me. Come check us out inside here. Because inside we're good. And if he did that, then God would not acknowledge the sin. Let me tell you something. Just because your house is in good condition, just because our house here is doing okay, and we say, God, come into hope and see how we are and think that God's going to be okay with that. He's not. Because he's watching the state of the place that we're living in. He's looking at our city and he's looking at our neighborhoods and he's saying, what's the use if your house is good if everything else is wicked that's why when I say I want all of Jamaica Queens in heaven nobody gets excited but it's time that we get excited it's time that we can't walk the roads without finding a son and a daughter and say look you gotta come to church with me this Sunday I gotta tell you something I felt like you but God fixed it What's so hard about telling somebody that? Pastor, they will judge me. Who cares? You say, God, New York loves you. And he's like, do they really? Because the sound of sin has come up to my ear, but the outcry against it has also come up. The evil we ignore finds its way to your door. The evil you'll ignore will find its way to your door. Oh, dad, don't touch me until your little son comes and tells you he feels like he's a girl. The evil you ignore. Man. I don't know who said it. I said it. I don't care about no 
those, those promiscuous girls until your baby come and say, Mommy, I'm pregnant. Oh, my son will never... My mom used to always say, don't ever say that. And my grandfather used to say, don't wash your mouth on people's children. <laughs> Same thing. When you live in compromise with unrighteousness, thinking that the world has accepted your form of faith, they will turn on you when you try to take a stand for truth. The reason why some of you can't be righteous in your job places right now is people already know you as a compromiser. Amen. When you cuss a little, then don't expect anyone to listen when you chastise them for their nasty language. Because you cuss a little. When you drink a little, don't get upset when you tell them drunkenness is a sin. When you flirt a little, don't expect them to listen when you say that adultery will get you to hell. When you gossip a little, we like all the others. But when you gossip a little, don't try to correct anybody in their sin because you say, who are you to talk about me? Man. The safest place in the whole wide world, the safest place in the United States of America, and I'm gonna tell you where it is, is, it's a trick. It's in the middle of God's will. Amen. Lot says, let me tell you what, as I end this, I wanna show you something that's happening. Lot, come back, let me show you. Finish me up. They tell Lot, they say, look, get out of town. No, it's urgent. To go. Go. To go. No, 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 come back. <laughs> it would have been wonderful if that's what he did. But that's not what he did. He said, he said, get out of town. Take your, your daughters, take your son-in-laws, take your wife and get out. Just like we try to tell you. We try to tell you. We say, come on, it's urgent. Time is short. And you're like, yeah, cool. You see, this is what he was doing. The Bible actually said he was idling. And so the angels, you know what they did? They grabbed his hand. They grabbed his wife's hand. And they grabbed his daughter's hands. And they left the sons-in-law. They left them. Why? Because the sons-in-law thought he was joking. What about those kids of yours who think you're joking? What about the ones that you can't control because they run your house? Oh, this story can't tell. They grab their hands and the Bible says the next time he opens his eyes, he's outside the city. They took him out. And now he said, now go. Don't look back. Just keep going. And then he says, Mr. Compromise says, send me to Zoar. Send me to Zoar. Zoar is one of the five cities God was about to destroy. It was a small town. And hear what he says. Send me to Zoar. It's just a small city. It's just a small little, little, little city. It actually says in brackets, in, 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 in parentheses, it says a small city. You know what he's trying to say? God, since you want to only destroy the big thing, send me to a small one. The word Zoar actually means insignificant. You know what that means? That means everything about Lot was how significant he was. And he says, God, I'm willing to live in insignificance if you'd save me. For those of us who think that it revolves around us, that God will do anything we ask him to do because we are us, I think we overestimate who us really are. We forget that we are dust. That's what we were made of. We forget that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. You forget that God owes you nothing. Yes. It's me, Lord. And he's like, exactly who? are you that's why he will say to some of us I don't know you I never knew you the Bible said that Lot was idling so he had to take him and even while they were running to Zoar his wife couldn't stand it anymore she just looked back and the Bible said she turned into a pillar of salt and theologians argue whether this really happened or not but I'll tell you what we got a chance to go to the real Sodom and Gomorrah we went to the historical sites where those cities used to stand and it's amazing because in the formation of the rock there are layers of, of, of um, sulfur 
which is according to the dictionary what brimstone is made of nowhere else is there brimstone is there sulfur but all over those five cities strata after strata guess what ash and sulfur and ash and sulfur pulverized rock because all of a sudden the vengeance of the Lord came down and when she heard the sound in the back of her head the Bible said she looked back beyond her husband you know what she did she was running ahead but she turned around and watched past Lot to see what she was leaving to see all the significance that she was leaving behind and this is a thing church unless we're willing to give up that to say God I realize there is nothing significant here the only claim to fame I had is that Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so that's the only claim we have the only significance we have is that Christ died for our sins and made us worthy to stand before him the last thing I want to tell you before I close tonight is this Where is the safest place in the world? The Bible says that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. But where is that secret place? Is it in the Bible? Is it reading every day and coming to church three times a week? And, and is it prayer life? And is it a relationship with God? The secret place of God is in the middle of His will for your life. That's it the middle of his will it's the eye of your storm it's the middle of a of every single hurricane it's the calm in the midst of a chaotic world that is the secret place that means that it doesn't matter if you're going through hell if you're in the will of God it's the safest place in America in the will of God they said don't look back the angels are trying to say anything you can leave behind for God to follow his will is not worth looking back for so what are we looking back for hmm. stand with me this is what the men told lot they said stand back and then they're talking to each other they said this one came in to stay here and he keeps acting as a judge hear this now we will deal worse with you than with them so they pressed hard against the man lot and they came near to break down the door what does that mean if you've been with me then you know that I taught you that the door is Christ and these men aren't really interested in killing lot they just want to destroy the door they need to get in they need to infiltrate and please hear my heart this is not about homosexuality this is not about any kind of the sins that God, that God said Sodom and Gomorrah because the, the other things were given in marriage and marrying and partying and and living life for your self-satisfaction it's not about that it's understanding that having our houses in order is not enough it really isn't enough God is not gonna come and say I I want to go to yours your house Zacchaeus because you are holy he says I want to go to your house Zacchaeus because you are not holy Jesus spent most of his time in the in the public places and the only very very few times we were told that he was in the house of someone who was righteous so when we think that Christ is gonna pick our house he's gonna see whose house we're affecting he's gonna see which city we're changing and even at a time when we want to make sure that our houses are dedicated to the Lord this is important I felt the Spirit of the Lord say this that he was gonna pour into this house enough resources to build I started getting some preliminary quotes for it for that church building that will curl your hair if your hair straight it will grow your hair if you have no hair and if you have lots of hair your hair will fall off <laughs> they're pretty crazy quotes but they don't scare me they really don't scare me because we are in faith season we are in the second harvest season I I love these moments 
I love the impossible times. You know why? Because God says, no, you move away and give me some room. Let me show you. Because if I could do it, he didn't have to do it. But when I can't do it, I know he's going to do it. But this is what I heard him say. He said, we're going to change this city. One house at a time. Starting with mine. Starting with yours. So that the angels could say, I'll go to your house or your house or I'll be at your house or I'll just go to your house. You know what? I'll just stay in the city square because where sin abound, grace much more abounds. And is there sin in New York? Yes. But is there grace in New York? Yes. And the grace of God will cover a multitude of sin. Hope NYC, that's why God put us here. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our houses, for our husbands, for our wives, for our children for our families, for our friends, for the people in our circle. Father, I call every single friend to repentance. What? If there's anybody in the congregation tonight and you have a friend that you've been praying for their salvation, I want you to shoot your hands high up in the air right now. The rest of you need to make some friends. He's like, all oh, my friends are Christians. You need some more friends. You need some more friends. Father, you love us and you love our friends. Father, you said that no one can come until the Spirit draw them. So Holy Spirit, draw them, oh God. Ruach, draw my friends to you, Lord. I pray that you quicken their hearts today. I pray that you write their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. I pray, oh God, that you convict them of their sin, oh God. If there is anything that is holding them back, I pray that you remove those thoughts. You remove those those people you remove those influences you remove those addictions in the name of Jesus I pray that they begin to hunger and thirst after righteousness I pray that every false voice in their ear is condemned right now in the name of Jesus I pray for an open heart for the things of God I pray for a depth and a hunger and a cry out I pray oh God that they will come and ask us oh God what must I do to be saved I pray that you'd give us the words to say at the right time God, save my friends, Lord. How many of you are looking for family members that need to be saved? Right now in the name of Jesus, I call them out of darkness into his marvelous light. Father, this is the time. This is the moment. This is the one that you've been waiting for. That son and that daughter. I pray for every wayward son, every wayward daughter, every brother and every sister. I pray for those who are living in the places of convenience and the places of significance. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you would grab them by the hand oh God grab them by the hand and set them outside the burning city Lord in the name of Jesus you alone can rescue them Father Church, will you join me right now? I hear the Lord say, call in the sons and daughters. Uh, call in them, the sons and daughters in places of authority. So right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, we're asking on a Wednesday, believing for the Thursday. I pray, oh God, uh, that you would save them, oh Lord. Uh, politicians will be saved. Uh, I pray that people of influence will be saved. Uh, entertainers will be saved. Uh, sports stars will be saved. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, I pray for salvations in the New York Yankees. Uh, I pray for salvations in the Mets. I pray for salvations in Hollywood. I pray for salvations all over this world in the name of Jesus. Sons and daughters of influence, talk show hosts, in the name of Jesus, right now. Woo! Oh, I believe it, Jesus. I believe you, Jesus. You know, we've been believing for signs and wonders and miracles, but won't it be a sign when our unsaved loved ones come to know him? Won't it be a miracle? Won't it be a miracle when they realize that religion can't save them? Can't save them. Relationships can't save them. Money can't save them. Yes, Lord, I hear the Lord saying that there's somebody on this side and that you know someone or you are someone and you're addicted to the taste. You're addicted to the taste of sin. Or the person that you know, they want to come to Jesus, but they don't know how to give up. 
the lifestyle that they, they've grown to love so much and you don't know how to live without that and God's saying he's going to remove that taste right now in the name of Jesus he's going to take away the appetite for sin in the name of Jesus right now that flow that flow of blood right now that flow of desire and that appetite that is ungodly it is quenched in the name of Jesus I pray oh Lord there will be a spiritual resistance there will be there will be an allergic reaction to the sin in the name of Jesus I call it done mm. yeah. oh Jesus oh Jesus Oh, there is a glory in the house tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for those who are asking for boldness to step outside the door into the city square. Those who are asking for boldness to speak the truth to people in authority. Father, I rebuke the spirit of cowardice in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of bashfulness and shyness. I rebuke the embarrassment that the enemy has convinced them will happen to them when they don't know the answers to the questions. I pray that you elevate them, oh God. I pray that you exalt them to places where they can speak your name with truth and authority. I pray that you back them up with supernatural power. That you back them up with the hosts of heaven. I pray, oh God, that you back them up with the anointing and the glory. There's someone who's afraid of speaking out because you're afraid of losing your job. And I got a word from the Lord for you. He said you'll get a promotion. You don't have to believe it, but I'm telling you what I just heard him say. I say, tell them I'll sweep the floor, I'll sweep the floor so they can walk to a promotion. I don't know who that's relevant to or what that's for. But he said, you thought if you spoke up, you would lose your position. And he said, you would lose it, but you would gain a greater position in the same company. I established that over you when you were bold enough to stand up for truth, says the Lord. It will happen and these words will not fall to the ground. In Jesus' name. If you're sick tonight and you need a healing, will you stick your hand up in the air real high? Hallelujah. I see three people and if four people and uh, come on up, the four of you come. I know if I opened the altars, it would have been 50 people. So I would just want those people who just lifted their hands to come up here. Hallelujah. Okay, good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Church, stretch your hands this way. God's going to heal these people tonight. He's going to do what only he can do. Hallelujah. Why would God heal you? Why would God heal you? There's only one reason. Because you are a testament of the glory of God. That's why he heals bodies. He doesn't heal you so you can be happy. He doesn't heal you so you can live a fulfilled life. He doesn't care about those things. He heals you it's for the glory. It's for the glory of his name. It's for his name's sake. You are a testimony. You are a testament. So in the name of Jesus, on the power, on the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Sister Sharma, right now, in the name of Jesus, from the top of your head all the way down to your feet, I rebuke every infection in your body. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed. The power of the Holy Spirit upon you. Healing in your body. over your body right now in the name of Jesus from the crown of your head to the very sole of your feet
Church, before we leave today, could you just express your gratitude to the Holy Spirit? Express your gratitude. Father, we love you and we thank you. I praise you, Jesus. For there is none other than you, Father. You're in a league of your own, oh God. You are incomparable, Father. You are the great, 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 great God of heaven. And we honor and we thank you, oh God. We praise you for what you're about to do in the lives of your people. We praise you for what you're about to accomplish, Father. We praise you that you have chosen them for such a time as this. We praise you that you have seen that they are stewards of your, your, your stuff, oh God. That they will be good stewards. Church, if that's you, will you just spread your arms open towards the Lord right now in an act of holy obedience. Oh Father, if you fill them, they will pour out, oh God. He can die about over so rebe of a seer of a say only to you, God, only to you, God, you alone are worthy, Jesus, you alone are worthy, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, yes, my God. Hallelujah, Father, I pray against the outcry. I pray against the sound of sin that comes up from Jamaica, Queens, that comes up from the borough, oh God. And I pray in the name of Jesus that as we cry out for the will of God, that the Spirit of the Lord will have mercy on us, will have mercy on our city, will have mercy on our government. I pray in the name of Jesus that a holy turnaround is happening in the borough of Queens, in the city of Jamaica, in the name of Jesus. It is changing. The atmosphere is shifting in the name of Jesus. Woo! Father, clean up our streets, oh God. Clean up our streets, oh God. Clean up our children, oh God. Clean up our neighborhoods, oh God. Holy Spirit. Woo! You are worthy. Hallelujah. Church, you got to commit to helping me pray. It is not a one man, one woman job. It's a job for a nation. It's a job for a people. It's a job for our church. You might say, well, I don't live here. It doesn't matter. We worship here. It's not just church. It's home. We're going to pray that change begins right here in the name of Jesus. And it's happening. You know how many people come in and say, when I say, where did you come from? One young man took membership this week and he's he lives two streets down the road. He said, I never knew it was a church. Thank God we put up some flags on the wall. <laughs> but that's my heart. I'm glad we come from Connecticut and Long Island, but I want the kids around the neighborhood to come here too. I want the people who live here to know there's home here for them too. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord. I see a grave. 
velvet piece of fabric and it's wrapped up like a I don't know how to explain it but it's like when my mom cooked roti when we were small and she wrapped it all up in a piece of cloth <clears throat> but it's gray and it's velvet and I see the Lord saying it doesn't even it's not even locked it's just wrapped up I see it sitting there and I, see, I, I feel like the Spirit of the Lord is just saying somebody needs to just open it that there is a treasure there is a valuable treasure that he's concealed but he hasn't hidden it it's just it's barely concealed for anybody that would just scratch the surface of his glory because you might think that it's not a big deal that you are in the last week or so you've gotten lazy and God is saying what they don't realize is that it's so easy to find me it's so easy to discover what I'm saying and and what once they open what I've put in there everything else falls into place everything else all the needs are met all the all the desires of your heart and all the questions are answered but but you're thinking that it's just okay and you'll do it next week next week I'll pray next week I'll read next week I'll get closer and he's saying no 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 it's just a small unraveling a small opening away I don't know who it was that this week you let yourself fall away and I'm not even talking about sin I'm just talking about carelessness you let yourself grow far from Christ and he's saying why'd you do that it's not everybody it's somebody but he's saying he's right there it's a treasure amen I bless you I bless your house I bless somebody's hand today I pray that I bless you that this week God's gonna meet your need and he's gonna overflow you in the name of Jesus I bless whatever it is that you've placed in the ground since June 1st till now that God's gonna give you 30 60 a hundred fold return for every seed that you've planted in this time of second harvest I pray that that season is now that this week good news news is coming your way because you are the son and daughter of the most high God child of God if you receive it and you believe it say I receive it in the name of Jesus I love you may the Lord bless you and keep you and I'll see you at compass let's go have some Milo